features if you want to list them in the metadata that's going to exist in your ebook, which I suggest that you always, um, you know, drop that in because uh, different e-readers read uh, the metadata differently, and so and they'll display it differently for um, for each um, for depending on the e-reader. Right, and so you can, um, we'll worry about the cover and things like that later. You can add your ISBNs here, uh, especially if you have one for print, one for EPUB, and one for Mobi, which is the Kindle uh, format. Um, you can add that here um, and extend the metadata just, um, you know, if it's in, a, in another language or the languages that it discusses, you can add that here um, and you can add um, more extensive metadata uh, here. Um, and we're actually working on some. Uh, accessibility metadata, uh, but that is currently in testing. So um, we'll see that um, once that actually updates. Um, so I'm actually not going to keep this file. I'm going to go back to the digital hub. See, it went ahead and created that for me. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one and go into OTN demo. As you can see, I was working on this. I'm going to clear this out just so that you have a whole work from scratch, essentially. And just for uh, the sake of completion, I'll just show you quickly that the only metadata I have in here is the code, which is necessary, the title, I just called it demo, and the publisher, I just put Scribe Inc. You can put in OTN uh, or whatever is uh, correct. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to files. It should be blank. It's going to tell you go ahead and, and upload um, files. We're going to go ahead and click this button here. And you can either drag and drop into this um, uh, area marked by the dotted lines, or you can uh, click in there and it'll bring up a box like this, right? And so we're gonna navigate to where our XML is, right? So it's OTN typesetting.xml. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. Try to rename it and hit open. You'll see that it comes up here and then just click the green upload button. Okay, and we should have um, now our files um, show the XML that we uploaded. Um, it's giving us a nice green circle saying everything is okay. Were you to click on that green circle, you see sort of the status alerts here. Um, if it was yellow or red, you would see um, the, uh, the issues here and where uh, to fix them. Also, as a note, you should see, you should see here um, that um, if you want more description of the file alerts, you can go ahead and click on that and it will take you to our site. I'll show you now. Um, and it gives you a description of all the file alerts, uh, should you have any. Uh, so we'll go back here. Oh, and I'm just gonna jump in real quick and say, sometimes you can see, um, you get like a, a red alert if there's something wrong with this XML file. We typically don't assume to go back to the actual XML file itself. It would, almost always indicate there's some, um, I want to say junk in your InDesign file. Sometimes, you know, if you're working from a template or maybe some other XML work was done to a file, if you've received it from another vendor or something, there can be things kind of built into what's called the structure pane in, the, in your InDesign file. So I would always, if I saw an issue there, just go back to the InDesign file, not try to fix it in the XML file. So you'll see it's just like all one big line kind of hard to tell what's going on in there. So we'd always say, go back to the InDesign file and take a look at that if you experience an error at this point. Correct, right? So we wouldn't want to work with the XML file because actually I'll, I'll show you something um, and this might sort of dissuade you from uh, opening up the XML file. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that in Sublime uh, just for a moment. Uh, we'll talk more about Sublime later, so. Don't ask me about the colors and all that stuff. We'll talk about it, don't worry. Um, but this is what the XML file looks like. Um, everything's actually on one line. Um, if you try to edit this, um, more likely than not, you'll end up creating some issues. Uh, so as Tim said, go back to the InDesign file, not the XML file. Um, so there you go, that's, that's a little view. Actually, if you go ahead and view this in don't worry about what I just did there. Again, we will talk about Sublime once we get to that point. Um, you'll see that everything is actually on one line. Um, so there you go. 
I'll just minimize that and go back uh, to there. And so our checks say everything is okay. Um, I'll give a moment just in case anybody's still getting here. I think we're all okay at this point, but just in case. Um, and I'll just mention some things here while we all get here. Once you get there, you can give me an okay in the, in the chat. Um, you can rename the file here if you'd like. Um, we don't suggest doing that because again, the XML file is just something that we're using to um, get to the next stage. Um, and so at this point, okay, I got it, got it, that's good. Um, we're not uploading anything else at this point. All we're doing is converting um, the XML file to SAM. We're uploading the XML to actually convert it. So we'll go up here to this green bar says in design XML, we're gonna convert to SAM. And if you click on edit settings, the only setting that you have available of going from InDesign um, to SAM is adjust typesetter tabs. Uh, we're not gonna do that here. Again, if you ever need more information about what a certain setting will do, you can click this information button here and it will uh, give you a description of what that uh, does. We're not actually, actually not gonna set that up. So, we're gonna to go to InDesign XML to SAM, and we're gonna go ahead and convert. And you'll see that this will go through and convert. But lo and behold, uh, okay, so Anna's having some problems with InDesign. Okay, so she'll just follow along, great. Um, so yes, if, if you have some issues with InDesign due to you know organizational issues or firewalls or, or blocked access or anything, please do feel free to follow along. Um, and if you need some help later on, you can always contact us and we'll be more than happy to set up a time to uh, run you through some things. Um, at this point, uh, you'll see that we have our SAM file, but wait a second, we actually have um, an issue. It's yellow, right? And this yellow is not a good thing, right? Um, it's not game breaking. It's not something that's going to like, you know, like red saying, hey, we're not gonna be able to convert it. It's just telling you that there's something here. Um, so if you actually click on that, you'll see that you'll get a validation error. And right, this validation says that this isn't valid and it's not valid for a reason, right? This reason is, is that there is PC data, in other words, text um, existing inside a tag that should not have uh, text. Um, and this is okay, we're actually, um, this is, we left this in on purpose so that you can see what we're going to do next. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and download your SAM file, right? And it's gonna go ahead and download, right? Again, mine just goes to the downloads folder, but what I wanna do to keep things um, organized, right? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this. Control X on PC, I think it's Command uh, X on a Mac, right? I'm going to go to the folder that I'm working in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder and call it OTN ebook Sam and I do that just so that I can keep files uh, separately and I know where I'm going and um, it sort of helps with the organization so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna just paste that Sam file in here and now I know that I'm working in this file right and so now is when we're gonna get into sublime I hope everybody has sublime installed once again um, if you had any issues installing the scribe tools or sublime please do follow along um, and we can all again um, go through any installation issues with you after the class um, in a private session if you so choose. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open that in, um, in Sublime, All right? And so this is what um, we use. Uh, you can really use any text editor to open up a SAM file, but we use Sublime because of the way that it um, not only displays information, but um, the sort of robustness of the features um, that it has. We use Sublime um, Text 2. Um, I believe Sublime Text 3 is out of beta at this point, um, and you could use that, but there are some things with our scribe tools that uh, we've yet to sort of set up um, with uh, Sublime Text 3. So Sublime Text 2 is your best bet. You may be wondering why um, 
I have like this color coded scheme here um, and you may not have it, especially if you just installed Sublime. Um, that is what's called syntax highlighting. Um, and Sublime actually has this by default. All you have to do to get that um, of, on your Sublime is you have to go down here to the bottom right. Uh, for you, it might say plain text. I know that sometimes when we share our screens, it's, it's kind of difficult to see. Uh, but for mine, it actually says XML. Uh, but uh, for you, it might just say plain text or HTML or something else. Uh, it doesn't matter what it says. All you have to do is actually just click on that text, right? And then it'll pop up with this um, selection here. And you want to go down to where it says XML and click on that so it's selected and you should see the syntax um, highlighting. So tags will be highlighted. Um, they may not be the exact same colors um, that, I, um, that I have here, um, but uh, you'll see tags highlighted differently from actual text um, and um, um, alt text or um, um, like sort of this metadata tags will be highlighted like you see here where mines are highlighted as yellow. Uh, with attributes being highlighted as green and so on and so forth. Okay. And so now we're going to look at our error. We're going to go back to the hub. And we're going to say, okay, there's an error and it says that the error is on line uh, 95. Oftentimes you'll see this. Sometimes it will not actually show you the error of the error line because it's a general error, but you'll see that it's here. This first number is the line number. Um, line 95 of our um, SAM file. So we'll go back, right? And um, on, I believe, see, this is once again, similar issue to what Tim had where we use shortcuts all the time um, and we sort of don't know where things are in the, in the actual menus. I know control G is a shortcut for jumping um, to a line number. It should be command G on, um, on Mac. Um, and what that'll do, it'll bring up this little bar here. Um, and there you can just type in the number and it'll jump to the line. You can also scroll down to it, uh, but that is often easier. Um, I believe it should be under go to, yeah, and then go to line. And that will go, will take you to that same little bar. And so you'll see on line 95 that we have our equation. And our equation, we're actually treating it as an image and something has happened, right? Where we see that the image has, we have this image tag here. It's, let's see, oh, control G on Mac as well rather than normal command G. Okay, that's, uh, Tim just noted that. Um, again, Sublime might try to be consistent across platforms. That might be why it's, it's there. Um, and so you'll see that you have this image tag inside another image tag, and that's actually what's creating um, our issues, right? So uh, what we have to do is all we have to do is take this, take this file and this little line here, um, you may not actually see it, you might just see a space. Um, if you have the scribe tools available, you can go up here where it says scribe ink, display, show invisibles, and that will actually show you, actually I'll zoom in here, so it's a little easier to see. It'll show you this little line for a tab um, and a little dot uh, for a space. Right, so that was scribe ink, display, show invisibles. Right. And so all we need to do is we're going to go ahead and take this image and take this tab and we're going to delete it. And we're going to delete the closing tag because remember um, a well-formed document has beginning and end. If I were to just leave this like that, um, I would actually be creating a bigger problem. This file wouldn't um, convert properly, right? So we're going to go ahead and delete that. I'm just going to put in a space. Remember tabs don't actually mean tabs in, um, in XML. They're just treated like a space. Uh, so I'll just create a space here. And now our image um, exists by itself in this nice little image um, call out. And by the way, <clears throat> What this, excuse me, what this slash indicates um, is just that it's a self-closing tag. That's why you don't see, oops, a big G. You don't see that. This actually just means that it closed by itself. Uh, but again, that's knowledge that you don't necessarily need or need to remember. Okay. So let's just go back. Kathy's asking me to repeat just a little bit. So. 
in a well-formed document, so HTML, XML, um, or any of those, um, or any of things, uh, any format that's like that, um, you need to have a beginning and an end tag for everything. Everything that begins must end. You can think of it that way. All right, so we have our EQ and it ends at this line. Um, you have our P uh, tag and it ends down here, um, so on and so forth. So if I were to just delete the opening tag, what I would be doing is I would be making my file not only invalid, but it's also not uh, well formed and um, the hub will not convert that. So you don't want to do that. So if you ever delete an opening tag, you always make sure you delete the closing tag as well, right? So that's why we delete those, right? And here, um, this little slash right at the end within the two brackets, all that indicates is that this is uh, a self-closing tag. So the image here is actually ending, but it's a short form of saying essentially this, right? So having this at the end within, remember it has to be within uh, the left and right angle brackets, is the same as saying this here. Okay, not a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and add that back in there. And so we're gonna take this, we're gonna save it. Once we save it, we're gonna just go ahead and minimize it. Don't close out of it because we're gonna go back to it. I just wanna show you um, how that fixed the error, right? And we're gonna go back to the digital hub. We're gonna to go to upload. You don't need to worry about deleting a file. The hub, as long as the file's named the same, it will just overwrite uh, the file. So again, and here's where the um, organization helps out because I know I was working in that SAM folder all I have to do is navigate to that, go to OTN typesetting.sam, and then upload. And we should see that we now have a green button. All right? No green circle. That means that our SAM file is valid and it's okay. And so